<laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. I almost feel new to YouTubing because it's been so long since I did a video. <laughs> I haven't uploaded in like three or four weeks and that doesn't happen often. But it has been Christmas. The games that I played this Christmas, I bet you wanna hear. I played a whole bunch actually of Immortals Phoenix Rising. I got the review code from Ubisoft, thank you. And I am happy to announce that I have written my full review of the game. A completely full buy or not review is coming, but I'm not promising when, because I I got a new job offer, quite a big one. I work as a video journalist uh, for the newspaper, but this time I am hired in by how do I explain this? The school leaders of this region, they have hired me in to record videos of schools. <laughs> and it's quite important because Corona. Students can't visit the schools because of Corona, so that is where I step in. Oh yeah. So, other than Immortals Phoenix Rising, <laughs> I played Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I'm not done with the game. I like it, but I need to play it more. So yeah. A lot of things is happening in Hyrule Warriors and I feel like I get to see the princess's history <laughs> and more of a backstory behind all of the guardians and a bunch of Hyrule stuff. I like the game and yeah, I recommend Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. It is definitely better than Hyrule Warriors 1, which I found to be personally disappointing. Uh, so I'm very happy with that. Good stuff. <laughs> what else is new? I got uh, this for Christmas. Crash Bandicoot. It's about time. It's looking so good. It looks so sharp, crisp, smooth, good. I love the graphics of the game. Now, with Crash Bandicoot, and you know this, they are hard games. And this one is no exception. It is brutally hard. I'm like at the fifth stage on the map and it is insanely difficult to progress the game. So uh, that is a a game that I die in a lot, but I'm struggling my way through it and I find it enjoyable in small doses because it's so hard. You see, yeah, it's like a good game, but wait for a sale unless you're a hardcore fan. Not for kids, uh, I wouldn't say. And guys, I have some other pickups on the table. We can start small, start small. And we have this one, Librant of Refrain. I know nothing of this game. It just looked cute and I found it on eBay and I was like, yep, I'm gonna try that, you know. Mm, even though I know nothing about it. I mean, I saw some gameplay footage, that's it. But it looks cute and fun. So I wanna know, is this good? I have no idea. So I'm jumping just blindly into that one. I haven't started it yet, but I will. Okay, so guys, do you remember a few videos back that I said that I wanted to buy my childhood game again? Now I found my childhood game, King's Quest 7 on eBay. And I was like, yep, gotta get that one as well. And so I did, but not only does it have the game with like a actual manual that I can flip through and the disc and it's cute. And it even smells like the 90s, if you know what I mean. It also has the floppy disc. Like, it just came with the game, but this is the most epic part. And this just tickled me straight into my childhood. It is the guide of the game with a walkthrough, tips and tricks, interviews, maps, I believe, also. Yeah, and like everything about the game. The first game that I played in my life, King's Quest VII. So that is very special for me personally. So this is like my good little thing. It's for me. It wasn't expensive at all. It was like shockingly cheap. Can't believe I haven't done that yet, but now I have. Uh, that was so worth it. I love eBay for that opportunity <laughs> to get old stuff like that. Now you're also wondering what is on my table here and here. Like I mentioned in my last video, the uh, Game of the Year video actually, yeah. I put this game into my Game of the Year list, uh, actually, because it had like a shockingly good story uh, and it was cute also. I just like the game, okay. I got that game as a review code, but I also went and bought the limited edition of the game. Super nice limited edition. But together with that, I also picked up the limited edition of number one. 
Now I'm talking about Death and Request 1 and 2. Now my cousin is borrowing this game, like the actual cover with the game, but he uh, didn't like the game because it's very text heavy. So that is the thing, warning, warning everyone. These games are not for everyone. They're very niche, like super niche and um, very story heavy, story driven heavy. You have to have some sort of special interest into games like this in order to enjoy them at all, I think. But they are very pretty, we can go quickly through them. And this is Death and Request 1 Limited Edition. Limited Edition. So we have a really good art book and I'm very happy with these art books because I have seen and ha I actually have a lot of art books. A lot of them are just like, you know, nothing special. This, need I say it, <laughs> smells good. It is high quality, good pictures, backstory, text to every single character. I like to do a bit of reading as well when I have an art book, not only pictures. It also comes with a little clot that uh, I'm gonna frame. I think I'm gonna frame this because cute. And just to have it said, guys, it's been so many years since last time I treated myself to limited editions, physical limited editions. Because I feel like I went overboard with that some years ago and it took up too much space and I started to feel like, oh, I don't wanna have too much stuff. I'm over that now. So it's just a steel case and it is so pretty. I'm loving this art style, and you know that. And we also have the soundtrack. So yeah, I, I just bought this for the cuteness and for my own satisfaction. <laughs> I mean, the box in itself is just so pretty. I can look at that and just um, feel a sort of wellness inside of here. This limited edition also came with a mouse mat because it is related to uh, something in the game, like in the story, uh, mouse mat and this, it is related. So, you know, this game also came with like this sort of thing, but my cousin is borrowing that, so I don't have it right now, right here. This is the limited edition of Death and Request 2. And I feel like this is the best limited edition because it had just cooler things with it. Of course you have the art book, which is just like the first one. High quality pictures, text to every single character in the game, and you have concept sketches, background arts, uh, all sorts of fun stuff. And it smells good, love it. It also had an exclusive novel. And this is the hidden story between Death and Request 1 and 2. So this is called Death and Request 1.5 novel, exclusive to, you know, this. So you cannot find, I mean, you can probably find this novel online or something, but this is the only place that it has been published. And that was with this limited edition. You have the uh, steel bookcase thing, pretty. I don't collect steel cases. I know a lot of people like uh, find them to be like collectibles, but I don't. And here you have the official soundtrack. And I feel like these limited editions, they're so well made, so well put together. And it's like a treat to open them for the first time because the items, do, they just go on and on. Inside of this one, I actually had a huge poster that I had framed. I'm uh, very happy with that. Now, if you think I am obsessed with the Death and Request series, I actually had a hoodie printed up with the print. So, you know, I went to a website, I uploaded a picture and I was like, yep, send that to me. So this is like, <laughs> there's only one of this in the world because I actually did this in Photoshop, positioning the characters the way that I wanted. I did that on Spreadshirt or something, but they were like, don't upload anything copyrighted. And I was like, eh. <laughs> but they printed it, so you know, no trouble. And you know how there are video games for every single mood? I wanna say that these games are for when you're in a very relaxed sort of mindset and mood because they're slow progressing, a lot of text, and you know, there's not much action going on. So if you are a very restless gamer, they're not for you. I'm just telling you right now, these games are not for you. You gotta have that, that sweet mood, the relaxed state of mood in order to fully enjoy them, I feel like, because they are part of visual novels. I mean, when it comes to this game, you have one hour of text cutscene before you can actually control your character. <laughs> Not even joking. Slow start. Another thing is that you don't have to have played number one in order to enjoy number two. You can start anywhere. Now, since it has been Christmas and everything, uh, 
My Discord is just booming these days, uh, if that is a way to say it. There's so many people in there and we get new members like every day. But my moderators and some Discord people, they put together a surprise video for me uh, now at Christmas. And it had so many fun sections, link to that down below because I want you to have a look at that. And I also want to share the funniest moment. A parody of how I do my video game reviews. Here you go. Hi everyone, and welcome back to Isha Gaming. Mmm, that is a weird name. Today we'll be reviewing Isha Gaming's Christmas Adventure. Story. You play as Norwegian YouTuber Isha, trying to have the best Christmas ever, despite COVID. The history was good, and the music was good. Gameplay. It's a green grass life simulator where you collect presents and stuff like that. Verdict. Isha Gaming's Christmas Adventure is a 10 out of 10 and a possible game of the year. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell and I will see you later. Merry Christmas Isha. Okay, so that was everything. King's Quest, The Death and Request, uh, Labyrinth of Refrain, Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity, and Crash Bandicoot 4. That was a bit of gaming news from me and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. The history was good and the music was good. No. <sighs> so yeah, that was that.